Thank you for coming again with us here at East London Holiness Church broadcast. Uh, we're still not in our church, but we're getting closer. Uh, we thank the Lord for that. And uh, this is Brother McKinley Holland coming to you again uh, to try to reach out to our people. We appreciate all the good London people and all the ones that's listening in different counties and different churches that we go to. We appreciate all you brothers uh, that is uh, doing something to reach your people. We're getting help from it as well. And we appreciate that. And uh, we hope the Lord blesses you. Uh, like for you to remember our church people here at London and everywhere else, uh, all of our good people, all of our elder people, them that's sick, uh, them that can't get out much, them that are up in age, we like for you to remember them. Uh, remember Brother Kenneth and, and Fern Morgan. Brother Kenneth been in the hospital at uh, Lexington, and he's home now, but he surely needs the Lord to move for him. They're wonderful people. Uh, went to church with them, known them for years on years, and a great light to me. And I'd like for you to remember Brother Kenneth and Sister Fern. Uh, pray for their family, and the Lord give them strength. And uh, just remember them. We'd like for you to remember also Sister Phyllis Owens uh, around Poor Valley Way, uh, Brother Richard and Sister Sharon Asher around Jensen, uh, Deborah Couch. Uh, we'd like for you to remember him. He's sick. Uh, he also lost his sister. Uh, my dad's up in Newport this morning uh, to preach that funeral. We'd like for you to remember. Uh, Brother Birdie and his wife, remember of them, ask the Lord to touch them uh, uh, and uh, uh, their family. I'd like for you to remember Brother David and Sister Fern Morgan, pray for them. Uh, all of our good people, remember them. All of our young people, we'd like for you to remember them. I'd like to tell you to hold on. Uh, use this time as time to get closer to God, to grow in the grace of the knowledge of his truth. And Read that word and pray and seek the Lord and fast. And uh, you young people, hold on. Uh, I, I'd love to get to see you. I'd love to get to be Williams and be able to share some experiences with you and uh, be able to talk to you and uh, hear your concerns. And I want you to know that we're here for you, me and Sister Angie are, and we want you to continue to pray. We're so glad of the news that we're hearing. Uh, so wonderful to hear about Ott and Jenny praying. We thank the Lord for that. Uh, Jacob Daniels, thank the Lord for that. It's wonderful to hear of our people coming to the Lord. And uh, we like to say there's still room. And uh, uh, there's a lot of us has been saved for a pretty good while. But I'd love to tell you tonight, if you get in right at the 11th hour, you'll get the same pay as we uh, that have been in this for years. God ain't no respect to person. I'd just love to see you come into the fold. And we sure appreciate everybody that's praying and we thank the Lord and he's dealing with people's hearts. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to the London people and all the other people that's anyway, in any way helped us uh, with the church renovation. It's come along very well. And we'd like to say that this uh, Thursday coming, April 30th, uh, we're supposed to receive our seats. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. And uh, we'll be needing help uh, to get those in the church, and if you could help us, it'd be wonderful. Uh, but we sure thank the Lord for that, and we're getting a little closer uh, to getting done, but we would like to, for the Lord uh, to open it up to where that we would be able to come in and congregate and assemble ourselves together uh, with, the great, with the saints of God. And uh, we'd like for you to, to pray about that, that we could get back in the church as soon as possible. Uh, we, we want you to uh, worship the Lord with us at this time. Uh, it, we're not doing this for any popularity, but trying to reach out to our people. And uh, we want you to pray with us, listen to the word of God, pull out your Bible, uh, and, and take this time out just like you's in church and uh, worship the Lord with us in spirit and in truth. But uh, we're going to sing some songs and we're going to come uh, before the Lord in his word and hopefully he'll anoint us to be able to preach to you today by the help of the Lord. Let's pray. Good Heavenly Master, we come before you today, Lord, and we thank you for another opportunity. Uh, good Lamb of God, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to be able to uplift and exalt your name uh, with the saints of God. And we thank you, Lord, for the ones that you've dealt with their heart to pray, Lord, and we're looking for you to do more. Uh, Lord, I'd love for you to remember uh, all the people to remember Sister Diane Bush and move for her, Lord, move for Diane Move for all of our sick people, Lord, the ones that we give in requests, Lord. Pray for them. God, we ask today, Lord, that something be said or done to touch somebody to point their heart and their minds toward Calvary. 
I love you today, Lord. In your good name, good Jesus, I pray, Lord. Amen. Children, let's get right in here and sing and worship the Lord now. Take time out and, and use this time as a benefit to worship the Lord. It's gonna take one Sister Kathleen Gibson used to sing out when I was just a child. Good sister in the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Mitchell Long sings that. And hallelujah. I love that song. It's not out of order. It's just out of style. But it ain't went out of style with me. I love it. I love it. But to the world, it has. But it ain't out of order, not a bit, children. But praise the Lord. I, I want to go now to the Word of God. If you got your Bibles, and uh, one verse has pressed upon us to read and uh, got some more things we're going to plan on talking about. 
Uh, but we want to be reading from the text to be Psalms chapter 69. Uh, the book of Psalm chapter 69 and verse 5. Verse 5. Listen now. The Bible says, O God, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Amen. I'm going to read that again. It's short, so we want to read that short and sweet. O God, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Amen. I, I thought about uh, today how that the Lord, he knows all about us. He does. And uh, he knows about, uh, our, 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 the writer said in the book of Psalms, he said, uh, thou knowest my down settings and my uprisings. Uh, thou knowest my thoughts that are far off. And uh, I, I thought how that the Lord knows more about you. I preached just different times saying this. Uh, the Lord knows more about you than you do yourself. And uh, these times that I think I know myself good, I think I know myself wonderfully well, but then all of a sudden I'll get pressed by the Spirit some way or another, and he may move on me to do something that I thought I could never do, but the Lord knows more about me than I did myself. Amen. And he wants to use you. He wants to use you today. Thank God to use you. He wants you to get out of your comfort zone and you to be willing to mind him because he is our comfort. I heard him say in one place, said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Ain't that a promise, good children? That's a promise today that he'll come to you. The Lord will come to you. You may say, well, Brother McKinley, I, I, I've got this going on. I've got that going on. You know what? They ain't one of us needs to know what you've got going on because only thing we can tell you is go to God or we'll go to God and talk to him about it because it all boils down to him. God, don't look at your problem as in this one's greater than that one or this one's greater than that. They're all a problem and he's the answer to them. Amen. Ain't that, ain't that wonderful in the Lord? But I thought today, thank God, is hallelujah, the Lord, uh, the word of God said, Oh God, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Amen. And I thought how that uh, a lot of times uh, uh, we, we, we want to hide things. Amen. And secrets uh, a lot of times. And uh, thank God that we don't want people to know about it. We don't want people to hear about or we or we're afraid that it'll make us ashamed of what we've done or, or somebody laugh at us or something. Don't want this told on us because for somebody to get tickled and laugh at us. And we don't want to be embarrassed. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. There's a man knows about you today. Thank God. There's a man knows about you. Amen. And I'm glad that he knows about me that when I went down to an altar of prayer and I talked to him, I had to pray a while, cry a while. I didn't know what to say a whole lot, but I finally, uh, the tears began to roll out of me, and I had to cry and let them tears, let, I had to let my heart talk to the Lord. I thank God because I really didn't know what to say. But when I finally got to where I could speak a little, I got to say, Jesus, forgive me. For will you forgive me, Lord? Will you forgive me? And I found out that that worked for me. Amen. And I want to tell you today, friend, hallelujah, when you get saved, the Bible said, if any man of me in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, and old things are passed away. Behold, all things become as new. Amen. And I thought the Lord wants you to sell out to him. He wants your whole heart today. And uh, we preach many a times how the word of God says in the book of Jeremiah that you can't quote it exactly, but it says it in this form. When you give him your whole heart out of the two scriptures, he said, I'll be found with you. Amen. I'll be found with you. And that's what we need today. We need the Lord to be found with us. But for us to be able to have the Lord in our heart, amen, we've got to give him every bit of our heart. Amen. And I thought, hell, that I thank God when the first church was set up there, the disciples began to uh, sell all things. They sold their portions of land and uh, they, they had all things in common. Amen. And, uh, they began to bring the money and what they sold down at the disciples' feet. And uh, in and out since Sapphire, they, a husband and wife had a portion of land. And uh, they made it out within themselves that I uh, will sell the land, amen, and I uh, will keep back a portion of it for ourselves and I uh, give the rest to the disciples, amen. And when they went out and went down to 
Peter and he uh, offered up the money and said, I had a portion of land and I've sold it for this amount of much. Amen. And uh, Peter began to tell him, said, have you sold it for this much? And he began to lie. And he said, I bid that you would lie against the Holy Ghost. And he fell down. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thought, now oh, they carried him out and buried him. And here comes Sapphire. And she didn't know what had happened, but she'd come back and offered up a little money and said, I sold the land for a portion. And hallelujah, he began to tell us, said, how is it that you made up to lie against the Holy Ghost? And the same young men's feet that cried out to her husband, and they stand at the door. Amen. And they'll carry you out. And she fell dead. And you know, while that land was theirs, they could have kept it. But they made up in their mind to tell a lie. Amen. And hold back a portion of it and say that they sold it for the amount that they offered to the Lord. Amen. But I want to tell you something, children, that God knows about you. Amen. There's nothing here in the eyes of God. And you may think, well, the church is closed. And I thank God the prophet can't get to me. And a preacher can't see me. But I want to tell you what the preacher and the prophet the works on today. It works on by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is an unseen eye. that he looks down in a man's heart and it sees the intents of the man and the intents of the heart of the children. It is a deserter. It knows today. Thank God the Bible said preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Rebuke, exhort. Hallelujah. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And oh, to God. There comes a time in this word of God. It will pierce our heart because the very thing that we thought that was hid from man, the very thing that we thought was hid from God, it ain't hid. That that was hid in darkness will be brought into the light. It will be made manifest into the light. Thank God we need everything to come out into the light. We need the likeness of God to be able to shine in our dark places of our soul, of our heart, and clean anything and turn not kill out of us. Amen. Thank God, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? Well, your sins is not hid from the Lord. Hallelujah, your sins ain't hid from the Lord. Children, when we think that, we're a fool in ourselves. We're a fool in ourselves. Hallelujah, got to talking about the woman that went out and committed adultery. Amen. And she said she'd come back and she wiped her mouth and said, I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. Ain't that like people today? They'll come out, they'll go out to the office, things ever was, and come back like they ain't done a thing. But oh, children, there's going to be a reckoning day. Don't play with God like that. Don't play with God like that. He knows your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I stretched out my hand. Have no man recorded. Hallelujah. But when your fear comes, he'll mock at you. He'll laugh at your calamity. He'll mock you. He'll laugh at your calamity. But children, you don't want that today. Yes, he's a merciful God, preacher. Sure he is. Yes, he is. But he's also a God of wrath. The Bible says he pours out. I thank God the wrath of God is poured out upon the children of disobedience. Here God wants your whole heart. He wants your cleanliness, your holiness. The Bible said it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication is not what's made among the Gentiles that one should have his father's life. But he began to tell him, he said, you have not ever more know this that this one should be took out from among you. But thank God, children, we need to mourn when that gets among us. We need to mourn we need to seek God and pray. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us to pull out the old leaven. I thank God we don't want to be having the old leaven among us, children. That's the old man trying to rise up. I'm coming to preach to you today. There's nothing hid in the eyes of God. You've got nothing hid today. Hallelujah. You've got nothing hid. Listen. Hallelujah. When Eve went in there and she took of that forbidden tree that God told them not to eat of. Oh, God. Told them not to take of that. But she went in there and that serpent beguiled her. And that serpent still beguiling her people. That old devil. He's a beguiling our people. He's talking swelling words to them and deceiving them. Thinking you can get by with a little sin. Hallelujah, children. You can't do it. You can't do it. Listen to me. 
Hallelujah. She took of that tree and she began to eat and she brought it to her husband. And when he began to take of that, thank God their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked. Glory to God. And they hid themselves. Listen now. Thank God but right now in the cool of the day. God come down, hallelujah, in the midst of the cool of the day in the garden. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Adam, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. He knew where he was. He knew where he was. Thank God, Adam said, we hid ourselves because we're naked. I thank God. Hallelujah. He said, who told you that you're naked? Amen. Hallelujah. They began to blame it on the woman and the woman blamed it on the serpent. Everybody wants to blame it on everybody. But children, when you stand in judgment, you give an account for yourself. The Bible said that there's someone place that you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Children, if you get enticed by your lust, hallelujah, you've been enticed yourself. The, the enemy did not make you do nothing. He, the only thing he done was suggested it to you. He can't make you do a thing, but he can offer it to you. And if it pleases you, if it causes your eye to look at it, and you lust after that sin, I thank God you're carried away by your own lust and enticed. Amen. You can't blame it on the preacher. You can't blame it on the prophet. You can't blame it on the church not doing good. When you stand in judgment, you'll stand and say, Lord, it's me. It's me. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Children, you can't hide from God. i love to get that message out today. You can't hide from the Lord. You can't hide from the Lord. If you're doing things and you're looking behind your back, Hallelujah. And you're afraid somebody's going to see you. So, and you're committing sin. Hallelujah. You need to go down and prick your heart with God and say, Lord, circumcise my heart. Hallelujah. Put your fear back inside of me. Children, you can't serve God and man both. You can't do that. You can't drink to the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You can't eat from the Lord's table and the cup and the table of devils. You can't do that. I thank God. The Bible said, neither can a fountain I bring forth both sweet water and bitter. Hallelujah. So now, that may be talking about how a mouth can bring forth both a cursing and blessing too. It can't be, children. There's, not, oh, there's only room for one inside of you. And I want to make sure that it's the Lord down inside of me. His holiness speaking out of me. Glory to God. His holiness, his purity, his love, his good holy ghost. I pray God that will bring forth wisdom. The Bible from this wisdom from above is first pure, it's gentle, and easily entreated. A children of God, we need this among us. And how do we get this? We get it by denying ourselves and the worldly lust that we should live. The Bible said, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. I'm teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Can you live holy? Sure you can. Sure you can. Amen. Thank God the Lord sees everything. He sees everything. Amen. Listen. He said, Adam, where art thou? He said, we've hit ourselves. What caused him to hide himself? What causes people to hide? What causes people to want to hide their sin? And act like they ain't done nothing. It boils down to this. It's because you're ashamed. It's because you're ashamed to know that you shouldn't have done it. But youngest, what's the better thing to do? Go down and ask the Lord to forgive you. Don't ride over things. Go back to the Lord. Hallelujah. If you fail, you fail. If you fail, you fail. Come back before it's too late and say, Lord, I've got to go. I've got to redo this. Don't try to override and keep a shouting and keep taking them up and keep trying to preach and all this stuff. Won't you just say, youngs, I've goofed. I messed up today. I can't do this. But by the mercy of God, I'll try to do better. Just let me pray. Let me pray. Come on, good children. He wants an earnest heart today. He wants an earnest heart. You know what I He wants an earnest heart. He wants somebody he can use. He don't want somebody to override these things. Glory to God and walk over top of these things like Nathan 
never did happen. He said in the book of John, he said, my little children, he said, I would that you sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the perpetuation for our sins, but not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And you God is a merciful God. Children, you can't have nothing from God. Listen. I thought there, the city of Jericho, hallelujah, God give Joshua and the children of Israel a great victory over the over, over Jericho. And Joshua told them people, said, don't touch the unclean thing. Don't do that. Don't touch the unclean thing. He knew that when they went in Jericho, they would see gold. He knew they would see garments. He knew they would see silver. And he told them, said, don't touch the unclean thing. I'll give you victory, but just don't touch the unclean thing. You'd think that'd be easy today. You'd think that'd be easy. But the enemy comes, and all of a sudden the thief comes out before the steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But when they went in Jericho, oh, the Lord told them, I said, march around that city, hallelujah, six days, one time around for six days. But on the seventh day, march around seven times. When they marched around, Joshua told them, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing, amen. But when I tell you to shout, shout. Thank God when they marched around the seventh time, Joshua hollered out to them and told them to shout. I thank God they took up them horns and priests did them begin to blow. And the walls began to come and down, a tumbling down. But when they went into that city, there was a man by the name of Achan. Glory to God. And when he went in there, I thank God his leg got to lust him. He got to lust him. He got to send a good Babylonian garment. He found him 200 shackles of silver. And he found him a golden wedge. That was the weight of 50 shekels. And he took a hold of it and brought it back into the Israel's camp. Glory to God. But when they went against that great city, that little small city of Ai, a Joshua just took a few hundred men up there to go against it because it was a small city. But that small city overthrew them and caused them to retreat in battle. But when Joshua began to pray, he began to inquire the Lord what happened. And the Bible said that God spoke to Joshua and told him, said, Israel, has sinned against me. Glory to God. They've taken of the unclean thing. He said, get thee up and sanctify the people. I thank God when he sanctified them and brought them together and the spirit began to call out of Achan and he told Joshua, told him, said, son, what have you done? In other words, he said, I have sinned against God. Hallelujah. He said, when I went into the city, I found a golden wedge of 50 shekels of weight, of 200 shekels of silver and a goodly Babylonian garment. And he said, I've hid them in the midst of my tent and the silver under them. Thank God when they went to the tent, they brought the, the golden wedge and the garment out of the tent and the silver that was under him. I thank God and they brought him back and they took Achan, his wife, his children and they stole them. Children, you can't put sin in the camp of God. It's got to die off. If you want God, you've got to kill out sin. Sin will come back and haunt you. It'll come back and look for you if you don't kill it out. If you let something haunt you like a shadow, you'll always be looking behind your back. You'll be wondering what the next man thinks about you. But I heard what Paul said. He said, I beseech you not for brethren. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, there is not for now a no condemnation to them who walk uh, not after the flesh but after the spirit. Glory to God. The, the, the Bible says that well no good thing in the flesh. The flesh loves sin. The flesh loves lust. The flesh loves this world. But the Bible said this, he that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For the things of the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. Hallelujah. He said the pride shall vanish away, but he that doeth the will of the Father shall abide forever. Amen. Whatever you're hiding, 
bring it out to light. Then say, Lord, here it is. Here it is. I'm bringing my sin and I'm bringing it to you, Lord. I don't want to override this and say that I'm a sinner in sin. There ain't no sin in saints. There ain't no sin in saints, children. Brother McKenna, why are you preaching this to us? Because I love you. The Lord knows, children, who needs to hear this today. Praise the Lord. He went to Calvary and he died for you. He went to Calvary and he died for you. Amen. He surely did. And he died because he took the sin upon him that me and you bore. He said, the reproaches of thee that fell on me, the reproaches of thee that fell on thee fell on me. He took them for us. The Bible said, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that was contrary to us, blew taking them out of the way, nailing them to his cross. Glory to God. Your children, hallelujah, that punishment that me and you deserves, he took it. He took it. Hallelujah. He don't like sin. He died because to do, to do away with the sins and to forgive man for the sins of the whole world. Glory to God. Like a sheep led to the slaughter, he opened out his mouth. Hallelujah. Pilate, give him to him, said, Did you not know that I have power? to release thee, to crucify thee, or to release you. He said, you have no power except my Father give it to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I ain't trying to condemn you children. Hallelujah. If you don't believe in God, you condemned your own self. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoso believeth on him should not perish. But have everlasting life for the Son of Man came not into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Hallelujah, if you don't believe on him, you're condemned already. You're condemned already. But oh, you're saved. He said, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Glory to God. Children, you can do away with these things, these hidden secrets, these hidden sins that we try to cover up. Hallelujah, I've heard my daddy preach a million times. Years ago, he'd say, you pull the cover up over your hand, and he said, the feet will stick out. He said, you pull it over your feet and your hand will stick out. You can't cover it up. The only thing that can cover your sin is the blood of Jesus. said, so Lord, if thou should mark iniquities, who shall stand? But he said, but there is forgiveness in thee. There is forgiveness, children. But don't cover your sins up with the things of this world. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to hide that's sin in the eyes of God, let it open it up and say, Lord, here it is. I ain't doing nothing, Lord, but making a mistake. I'm not doing nothing, Lord, but putting sin on top of sin. But Lord, if you put your cloak upon me, hallelujah, when that father saw his son coming, he put a robe around him, had a ring on his finger, and he said, kill the fatty calf. He said, for my son that was lost, he's now found. Glory to God, children, he wants to put his cloak of love about you, but you'll have to go out of the sinning business. 
I appreciate the Lord. Amen. Today, if you feel the Lord dealing with your heart, hallelujah, you may say, preacher, you get a little tough on us. Oh, but Ken ain't trying to be tough on you youngins. I'm telling you, you get past me, I'm nothing. But hallelujah, to get past that good man who died for sins, it's going to be hard to get past him. I wouldn't want to commit sin and something that he died for and have to look him in the face, knowing that he gave his life for the transgressions of this world. He took that cross upon his shoulder and he carried it in place of me and you and for our sins and our transgressions. And how could we look him in the face and him look at you and sit apart from me? You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Boy, it'll be a sad thing. It'll be a sad thing. We're going to sing a song today. We love you. I believe that there's hope. I believe there's hope in Christ. There is. As long as you've got breath in your body, there's hope. Hallelujah. He wants us to come to his marvelous light. I heard him say, this is the message that we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. Hallelujah. Maybe I can't quote it exactly right there, but thank God he done it for our sins, children. He done it for our sins. Amen. He loves you today just the way you are, just how you are right now. He loves you and he cares for you. He wants you to lay down the sin of this world. Only thing the sin of this world will do, hit a beat, hit a beat on you. Hit a tire you down. Hit a destroy your soul. But listen to what we said a while ago. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing the song. Praise the Lord. And hopefully we said something to help you today. Praise and good way to look at felt the Lord down with your heart. I didn't open the altar up so I was going to sing, but that was what we want to give that last song time to do for you to pray. That last song. Children, there's going to be a come a time that you'll hear the last song. That you'll hear the last message that'll ever be said to you. And when you close your eyes in death, how will it be? He loves you. I love you. The church loves you. But how much greater is the Lord's love towards you? I love you today. This is East London Holiness Church, Brother McKinley Holland. We appreciate you coming in and sharing this time with us and worshiping the Lord. Until next time, may the Lord give you strength and uplift his holy name. In the good name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen.